All right, well, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Back in the studio, gonna paint cherries, getting a little bit Christmassy. Got tons of paint ready to go. Really excited about this subject, actually, because I'm gonna paint it slightly larger than life, so we'll have some nice big cherries here and whatever else. Should be able to get right in there with a the palette knife and have a bit of fun. All right, let's get on with the biggest differences now between having a blank canvas and the finished product. Let's just have a look at those colours of what we've got. Viridian Green, Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Scarlet, beautiful high key colour for putting those highlights on, Yellow Ochre, bit of Lemon Yellow for also for the highlights, and of course Titanium White. So, now we're all ready to go. All right, let's just get straight into some of these beautiful reds. We'll start throwing a few reds on, just feeling our way. Right, here we go. We'll bung that on about there. Let's just have a look at something here. We are recording, that's always good to know. Okay. One can go about here, I reckon. About here. Just feeling my way. Just feeling where I want things to go. Not set in concrete as yet. Maybe a bit of a one here. A bit more red. A little bit of one can sit there. One can overlap a little bit here. And there maybe one coming right out of the picture just here. Yeah, that's all right, we'll do that. Establish this bit further out there before I lock her in like I was saying, you know, you've got to feel your way All right now, let's change a little bit and we'll go for some burns to know, just a little bit of blocking There I'm going to take that back a little bit. We're just feeling my way here. Just going to put a bit of a branch through here these cherries can come on to something like that and then maybe a bit down here just drawing the stems on them right let me just stand back and see if I've got everything in the right position before I get stuck right into it okay well I've got the pretty much got the shapes in now I want them but now what I'll do is start putting some of the darks in and then put the lights on top so Let's go for some burnt sienna ultra marine blue. That makes quite a good dark. We'll go with that first. Just set up some really dark darks. Dark. Maybe a bit more burnt sienna and plain viridian green. Quite often I stick red in the shadows. But I won't be doing that today. Today I'll put the shadows on the cherries in red, so I want a contrast between that. So the opposite side of the colour wheel will be more of the greens or whatever, so I'll put the shadows more in that to help them pop against the cherries themselves. Well, a bit more green green, yellow ochre. Just set up some darks. Look at that burnt sienna and whatever else. That can go in there. Get a good block in, a bit more burnt sienna to warm the value in yellow ochre. Right up to the edges, nice and neat, lovely. Look at that, it's going on nice today, which is good. Okay, a bit more yellow ochre, a bit more burnt sienna. Slightly warmer values, just varying colours and tonal values as I go. Right in there. Plenty of broken colour with got the big knife out. Broken colour. Little marks with the big knife, always a good one. Gives the illusion of detail and plenty of things going on. So we'll just feel our way in. 
more yellow ochre, more burnt sienna, more viridian green. What are we doing down here? Let's have a look. There's the bottom of the cherry there. We'll leave some exposed linen. The linen is primed, clear primed, so that's all good there. There's no, no problem with the paint soaking in into the canvas, it's, uh, into the linen itself. It's protected by the primer. Okay, just feeling our way around. A bit more of this yellow over viridian green. So a little bit in here. Maybe go for a bit of a white up there too, because some of the sky is starting to get involved up here. And we're putting reflected reflections in to the leaves and whatever. So there'll be bits like this. And you know, bits around here, right near the cherries. Where the light's actually shining through because we're looking up into the tree and you can see. Give up some rain blue with that to cool it off. Looking up into the tree, so you're seeing reflections from the sky and whatever. A bit more ultramarine blue. Shining down into things. There we go. Lovely day. Nice colours. Maybe put a bit of a leaf here, like so. Okay, let's stand back and have a look. That's looking good. Let's get some more red, blue and crimson. Just come down a little deeper now. Now that I'm starting to establish a few things, a bit more blue and crimson, maybe with some burnt sienna. That was some crimson and very blue red. Burnt sienna will just make it a little bit browner. Now they're in the key down shadow values at the moment. Oh, look at that. That's great. The lower key values and then, like I was saying, we'll stick the beautiful lights and high key colours on later on once we get everything more where we want it. Should be good there, and that one will be good there, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Then there'll be little hints every now and then of just a little flash of red where there's cherries in the background now, I'm saying. Bit of a cherry there, maybe. Change tack, go for some of these lighter blues. Just do the top here. This is be about where I want the branch to be. The top of the branch is getting reflected blue light from the sky coming down and reflecting into it. Get that foliage going up to it. So, a bit more of these salt. I can go around there like so. Shape of leaves there. Just beautiful. The background's just an out of focus abstract pattern to lead your eyes into this subject matter. Let's get a bit of yellow open lemon yellow. Let me just put some high key colours down here for a moment. And get some good coverage. Okay, viridian green, yellow ochre. Burnt Sienna. Plenty of chunky paint. Light chunky style. That'll be cherries there. We'll watch that one. Yeah, that's the edge of the cherry. It's all coming along. Just feel our way. Alright. Uh, Stand back and have a look. Looking good. Let's get into a bit more. 
just before I go too far, we'll finalise some of these cherries. There'll be one here in the corner. Make that one nice and dusty and out of focus because I don't want to draw too much attention to that one. So it's the alizarin crimson, but it's got a bit of the sky blue in it, which has knocked the value back, taking your eyes away from it. Put it right in there. Okay, now I'm noticing, because these cherries are not lit up at the moment, I've got all the dark values, but once they light up, they're actually reflecting a little into the underbrush. So I'll just stick a bit of red under there. That light bouncing off those cherries. Where's that going to be today? That'll be there. Okay, now we go from all the browns and blues to make a darker value. Just yeah, there's a little bit of green. Let's get a tiny bit of red. Brown. Lighten that value up a little. Okay. A bit more green here and sky blue to lighten that value even more. Just painting. It's branching. Good variety in marks. Hang on there, that'll be there. All right. Bring some green up to that. Get a bit of, don't want that to be too much of a straight line. Let's get a little bit of shape in that branch. Upside down knife, where's a good variety. A bit more of the blues there. Yeah. Bring that paint down for the top where the cherry top of the cherry is going to be. Pull things out of focus because it's the background. Blend them. Nice big chunky style marks though. We don't want to lose out on that. It's always a winner. Just dance the knife around for variety. Let's stand back and have a look, eh? Hey? Ultramarine blue, white, burnt sienna, more white, more burnt sienna. It's getting a light value here. How light is that? Pretty good. Just dance a little, little marks around there. All right, that'll do for that. Next, what we're going to do is let's get some nice highlights to really get those cherries to start forming and whatever else. So, we'll get some white, but we'll key down the white with those burnt siennas, ultramarine blues. So it's not the strongest white in the world. It's just key down version. We'll save the strongest white later on for our accents. So, where are we going to go today? About up here. Got a feel where this is going to go. That'll go through there somewhere. Okay. Bit of light on there. Bit of light under there. Someone here do that one too. Just got to get the draftsmanship of the cherry as I'm going. There's a little bit of a dip on the top where the stalk of the cherry heads in. We want that blue, sky blue, just reflecting in here on the side of that cherry. Alright. We'll come around in there somewhere. So what do we got here? Let's have a look. One, two, three. We've got the third one here. Let's just pop it out there. I'll get rid of that green in a minute and I'll stick it. Just going to stick a bit more of the cherry on there with a bit more red in a minute. There. There. Like I said, these are not the strongest values. That'll come later. Particularly as we get near the edge of the picture, just key them down. You don't want them too strong. It'll draw your eye 
away from the subject. You want everything keyed down, build up to the grand finale here, so you're moving across the scene. Alright, get a little bit of that yellow, white, lemon yellow. I want to feel, I'm not getting carried away yet, yeah, I just want to feel what's going to go on here. Yeah, that's a nice one edge, that'll be nice there. That'll bend up like this. That will be good, or just, just suggest it at the moment. Maybe suggest the one that's going to be here. Yeah, and maybe just while we're at it on that theme, just that extra little bit through up in there. Yeah. On there. Maybe a bit on there. Let me just stand back once I get those shapes right. I'll really start pulling them in. A little bit more Elizabeth Crimson, that colour is going fast. Alright, so let's just get some of that new Elizabeth Crimson I just put there with a bit of burnt sienna maybe. I said this will be... It's all going to be shadow there. I've just gone down a size in knife, no real reason, maybe just to get a tad more refined. So I don't get too out of control with my broadness. Colour that in. Alright, right. I'm just going to go there a bit more red. I think this is the basic blend of where everything's going now. It's looking good, the shapes. Now, what I'm going to do is start refining a little bit more. Well, not refining, but at the same time, adding more intense colours. I'm going to get the cadmium skull out and really ping and pop and see how it goes. Alright, we'll try a bit of the cat skull. We'll try it neat first and see what happens. That is super high intense, but we need a little bit of high intensity every now and then, you know. Just put some in. A few spots. It's blending with the colour underneath. Just model it around a little. That's the edge of that one. Some nice red on the edge. I might just pick that out. Put a bit in there. That's looking good. Bit of red up in here. Bit of cat red. That's looking alright. We don't actually need too much of that cat. I'm finding that alizarin crimson, that blue red, is actually quite a nice red. What I'll do is go for a bit more white on those blues. Not full strength yet. Like I said, I'm saving that. At the same time, I'm still going to pick out some of the edge of those cherries. And hang on, don't necessarily want that highlight to go all the way down, so I can actually scrape it back a bit and soften it. Bring it around like that. Get a bit of white and blue again. It's going to be a major colour value here, where the light's really striking. But there's other bits around, because there's reflected light everywhere. They're very reflective, as you know, cherries, so... They're pumping out light. Highlights everywhere. But, like I said, don't make them fall all full strength. Don't make them even. There's only going to be one spot on the painting that's got the full strength. The rest are going to have to be sacrificed, that little bit. 
to make the main one pop. Over here and there. They're quite keyed down, I'll just wait with that. Then I'll just get some pure white, absolutely pure white. I'm just going to knock in a bit over here. Stand back and have a look, eh? All right, with a fairly clean, clean knife, just going to get some of that background, pull it through and wipe it, because what I'm trying to do here is just make the background really out of focus, like I was saying earlier. So, painting really pops then. You'll get these cherries will jump off, off the page. <laughs> Through a good variety of marks. Maybe soften this area a bit. What have we got? See, I'll wipe that clean. Let's just get a new piece of oh, get a piece of paper here. Maybe not clean. Let's just pull through that first to soften that. Getting a fair bit of variety. Bring that around. The draftsmanship of a leaf just here. Okay, just got to feel it. What are we doing here? I want to soften the bottom of that, so I'll pull the bottom of that cherry. Make this stuff there, but a bit more out of focus, so it's not drawing too much attention. That leaf can be there. Out of focus. Pulling up. Yeah, it's starting to happen. Pull that through there, down onto there. Right, so hopefully that out of focusness is drawing your attention more into the subject matter itself. And like I said, I'm going to work my way across as well, so I'll key this area down a little bit more than here. Just going to get A little bit more of the shape of this leaf in here. Just in a few areas, what we'll do is define a few leaves. So then it suggests to your eye what it is. Once your brain understands what it is, you'll see the rest of the out of focus as being the same thing. But if you don't make any leaves realistically finished, your mind might, might actually get confused. And your mind might go, I don't even know what any of this stuff is. But as soon as you make a few more obvious, then put the rest out of the focus. Those obvious ones will, will suggest what it is, and you'll see the rest is just out of focus leaves. Right, just up here, I might put this is where the stem goes into the main trunk. I'll just get some yellow acres, a bit of that care red. I want a real high key colour and white. Predominantly yellow, I like a half mix. Let's just put that in here. Like so. Yeah. Then I'll go for some white, lemon yellow, little hot key colours. Just touch the edge of that. Knife on edge. Do have a bit of detail there. Knife on edge. A bit of detail there too. Okay, starting to get there. A bit more of the yellow ochre. Okay, red and white. A little bit of bright bits there where the light's just catching bits. Little bits of bark peeling and whatever else. Intricate detail, but not drawing attention away from the main subject. 
everything's ordered. It's a flat surface. In reality, three-dimensional word, you can read reality quite well because you've got two eyes, so everything goes into three dimensions. But when you're on a flat surface, you've got to get that three dimensions going on a two-dimensional surface. So you purposely key things up, play things down, etc., etc. I want to the knife here, it might just soften. Have the confidence to just pull straight through. Sometimes you mess it completely up, other times it works. So we'll just go for it, see how it goes. Seem to work all right. Let me just bring a bit more of this up there. I just want a few more confident marks here. I've laid it in. I want it to be more blended, more broken. Your eyes will follow straight lines. If you've got too many straight lines up here, your eyes will tend to go up there because there's not a lot of straight lines in nature, I guess. So if there's something really straight here, you'll tend to look up. So by breaking it up and bending it, you take your attention off that and maybe more to where the most vibrant values are in here. So we'll go with that. Let's stand back and have a quick look. All right, things are starting to really come along, which is great. Let's just get a little bit more of those blues and whites. Maybe just get the knife like so and bend it up. Flick, flick. To find an edge there. Bring that red right out there. Lovely, look at that now, scrape back. I had the red on first, as you saw. When I scraped the paint off then, I had a little bit of a light tone on there, so it's put a beautiful edge to the cherry. But at the same time, by taking all that paint off, it's come back to the original color, the red. So just by me bending, I've actually produced a nice cherry there with a really good little highlight on the edge. Come in with some red here too, I reckon. A bit there. A bit there. Bit more red. Let's just get a bit there. It's giving the feeling of background. Background cherries, not just the main ones, but the other ones. The cherry tree under the Chook House is absolutely loaded with cherries this year. Unbelievable. I've got a, what I've done with the Chook House is I've built fruit trees in a cage about a couple of years ago, three years ago, maybe four now. And it's taken a few years now for these trees to get mature enough, but now reaping the rewards and the chooks have got these this fruit hanging above their head. They don't even look up, they don't even try and climb the tree. Absolutely great. So these things are there ready to go. Every now and then I'll drop a few on the ground for them and they get a bit of a feed too, but it never occurs to them that they could look up and just jump into the tree, which is great. Works great for me. Otherwise I have to put some sort of cage around so they can't get up the trunk or something. Anyway. This year the cherries are going fantastic in there and this is actually from that. Just really, we'll just keep on going and clean up some of these edges here. Soften that a bit. Yeah, a bit more of the blue. Not too much, just a little bit. Just to give variety to what's going on. Variety of marks. Mark here. All right, well, things are coming along really well, but now that I've got the basic bulk of colours in, what I want to try and do is. 
start to refine and see these stalks here, if I put a lot more energy or effort into these, I'll just take a bit of paint off with the edge of the knife. These are the most obvious things. So if you get these things looking refined, anything that stands out really obvious, make that refined, your mind will see the rest as refined. So if you take a bit of paint off and blend and soften. This one here is nice, but it just needs to go that twang thinner. So I'm actually taking the paint back with the edge of the knife. And because I've got the dark stuff underneath, Going back to that beautifully. Really get the detail going here. On the back of this, a little bit of cold reflected light. All right, maybe a bit more of those blues up here. What do we got? So, I got a bit cooler and bluer here too. What's this one doing? That one's there, that one's there. Scrape that back and then get some pure white. Stick some real thin high key line there to draw your eye into that area. Maybe a bit more pure white here. This is where we've got to put our detail, of course. These are little oh, white. So we should jump out. Just lift the knife up and down a bit just to soften those edges. Maybe soften that a bit. So what I'm actually doing there to get it soft, I've got the knife and I'm bouncing it up and down interesting technique when it does if you just smear it sometimes it gets a bit muddy and messy but if you bounce the knife up and down let's just try it here it softens it off beautifully a bit more of that technique just here it's all coming together nicely bounce 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 White clean, keep on going. White clean, keep on going. All right, things are starting to come together. Let's just stand back and have a look, eh? Good, but the light on the thick paint is just catching my attention here a little bit too much. So I'll soften this area if I can, just pull it off through. So there'll be less impasto paint there to catch the above light. So let's just use the finger actually. I don't want the above overhead lights to catch too much of the thick paint because I want it to be quite refined and detailed in this area. So, I've just thinned the paint a bit to get a bit more refinement going on there. Let's just refine this edge here. It's a real keynote of the painting. Stand that out. A bit more here. We want that to be very It's all coming along nicely now. Why don't we just finish off what we're doing here a little bit. 
in more high key bits, just Alright, nice amount of detail there, just bringing a little, I think we're pretty much getting it right, so that's the thing now, it's gotten to the point, I've got the big impression, should I keep on going, or should I leave it at that, and in some ways I love the spontaneity and freshness. Let's just leave it at that, now I'll explain some of the stuff I've been doing here. Like I said, we've got the keynote right here, the cleanest white with the hardest edge. Down in the shadows where the bottom of the cherry is, I've actually completely let go of it. So it's quite choppy through here. I'll get the camera off in a minute so you can come in and have a look. It's quite choppy through here and out of focus, and that's to get, your, to get the three-dimensional shape as it turns around, but also so it doesn't compete, and it also makes the hard edges stronger. So you've got hard edges where you want to lead the eyes. By softening the other edges, you're actually forcing your eyes into that area. So working off here left to right, keyed down cherries, they haven't got the full chromatic saturation, they haven't got the full tonal range, they haven't got the pure whites, they've got off whites, and the form is loose. And as it moves left to right, it builds up to a grand finale central thing here where there's much cleaner edges and whatever else, and then it just backs off again as it goes off. You don't want too much detail over on the right side because you're moving from left to right, stick too much detail there, you'll keep on going off the picture. So the idea is build up, build up, build up, crescendo, then back off just that little bit, and then have some echoing things around to celebrate the main subject, but not compete with it. Pretty happy with the colour combinations, the applications, nice and chunky, but broad, but refined. On the whole, pretty happy. Why don't we get that camera off now, come buzzing right in, you guys can have a look, and see what you think. All right, thank you.